Mark, Mark, come here. What is it? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. What do you got? You are not gonna believe this. Oh my gosh. Come on, come on, come on. Wow, I can't believe that I just caught this creature. Hold on just a second. I peel back my hand. Look at that. Do you know what that is? Today, the crew and I are exploring a lush valley cut into the center of the Costa Rican Amphibian Research Reserve. This biological safe haven spans over 100 acres and is home to many species of birds, reptiles, amphibians, and countless creepy crawlies. Wow, look at those ants. I don't know what species that is. Let's find out if they bite or sting. Ooh, 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 yep, they bite. Ah, look at that. Embarking upon an adventure into the rainforest always fills me with a sense of excitement. The terrain is incredibly challenging, especially when breaking trail into the unknown. And whether it's slippery, rock-strewn riverbeds or the disorienting maze of endless trees, the adventure is always epic. When it comes to finding animals, Doing so in a rainstorm is incredibly challenging. However, sometimes it's the flooding of the forest floor that can actually bring out the rarest of creatures. Mark, Mark, come here! What is it? Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! What do you got? You are not gonna believe this. Oh my gosh. Come on, come on, come on. Wow, I can't believe that I just caught this creature. Hold on just a second. I peel back my hand, look at that. Do you know what that is? Whoa, it looks like a giant earthworm. It is actually an amphibian, and it is called a Sicilian. Let me get it out of the leaves here. Oh, I can't believe that we just caught this, and I bet you the reason that I even saw it was because there's so much water moving through here. Let me see if I can just lay it out on my hands. Wow. That is one of the most bizarre animals you will ever come across in the rainforest. Whoa, it is slippery. Looks fast. Look at that, it just tied itself into a knot. Whoa. And actually, this end is the head. I can't, I can't keep it in my fingers. It is like a slippery water balloon. Is it slimy? It is incredibly slimy. Just put your fingers out there and feel it. Oh, it feels just like an earthworm. It does, it does. It looks like a mix between a snake and a giant worm. Even the little rings in this animal's body make it look as if it has segments like an earthworm, but in fact, that is just the pattern of its skin. And you could search for years out here in the rainforest and never come across one of these. You literally have to dig in the leaf litter or deep down into the earth to find them. This is one of the most incredible fossorial creatures that we could have possibly come across. And it is so- Hey Coyote, I'm, I'm sorry to stop you, man. The, the, the camera's getting doused. I'm afraid we're gonna lose the camera. Uh, dude, we have to film this animal. I know. Um, okay, here's, I got an idea. Mario, hand me that plastic container. Okay, we always have a container with us in case we need to put amphibian in it. And I think what we do, let's actually take the Sicilian to a more controlled environment, get some macro shots, get you guys an episode. The odds of us ever coming across one of these again, probably slim to none. So we'll bring it back here to release it, but let's get ourselves where we're not getting soaked by the rain, because yeah, you're gonna destroy your camera, aren't you? Yeah, the I saw rain cloud go over, like it's... Okay, let's let's cut the camera, and let's continue the scene in a controlled location. Okay. Oh, this is so cool though. All right, Mario, pack, pack him up, man. Let's All get right, out of here. let's go. And we are back. I'm gonna take off my pack for this one. Right now, we are at a little jungle research station. This is great, gonna keep the cameras and myself out of the rain for this scene. And in that container is the Sicilian. There it is. Ooh, slippery little noodle right there. Wow. The skull is very, very rigid, and that is what allows these creatures to dig underground. They are fossorial and the body is filled with all these tense tendons and the way that they travel underground is almost like a hydraulic piston. It will drive its head into the soil using all the power from its body and then once it's made some progress, it will then slink its body forward almost like a worm. Wow, it is so strong. It's taking actually quite a bit of strength just to hold it in position like that. And 
They do have eyes. The eyes are very, very small. Let me see if I can see them. But they have eyes, they have nostrils, and they have these little tiny tentacles right up front. Actually, I can see that in the light there. And those are chemical receptors that help this amphibian sense what it is after when it comes to prey. And they feed on little earthworms or termites. Now, there are around 200 species of Sicilians worldwide, and of those species, around 75% give birth to live young. Now, this is really interesting, and in fact, I'm sure most of you didn't know. The females actually stay with the youngsters to protect them, and as she is protecting them, she develops an extra layer of skin on the outside of her body, and the youngsters feed on it to nourish themselves. It's very high in nutrients and fat. How gross is that? Eating skin off of your mom, right? Ugh. This is so bizarre looking. Now they do get quite a bit bigger than this. And there are some species that can grow up to almost four feet in length. And then of course there are some that are smaller that are only a few inches. But this one is uh, just a little less than a foot long. Look at that, how it can just slink through my hands. Now they do secrete a mucus from the sides of their body, which helps them navigate underground, but it also is slightly toxic. So I am gonna have to wash my hands after handling this amphibian. Look at that, look how it can just slink through my fingers. There is some research that's been done on them, hence how I know the facts that I know, but because they're subterranean, it's very rare to ever come across them. So it's tough for research teams to find them. You could spend months digging in the jungle and you literally have to be in the right place at the right time to come across one. Are all Sicilians this color or are they all dark like that? Oh no, I mean with uh, nearly 200 species worldwide, some of them are very brightly colored, blues and yellows. Um, I would guess probably aposematic in coloration because like I said, they are slightly toxic. But this one, just kind of purplish and it would blend really well into this rainforest leaf litter. You look around us and everything is very similar to this coloration. I was excited because I've never seen one before and I knew that everybody out there watching would love to see this unique amphibian. How cool is this? Pretty awesome. Yeah, wow. All right, well, let's get it back into the rainforest and see what else we can find. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. I'm gonna take my pack. I have come across some bizarre creatures, but to have gotten a Sicilian an animal that almost never comes to the forest surface, up close for the cameras, was a moment the crew and I will never forget. We released the animal right where we found it and managed to capture on camera some of its natural and very rarely seen behaviors, just before it disappeared beneath the leaves and back under the ground. If you thought the Sicilian was bizarre, make sure to go back and check out the giant black sea slug. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. Okay, so this is this is cool, showing the comparison of the giant black sea slug next to the much smaller brown sea slug.